You're watching The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee. I don't know where the hell Envy went, but uh, we got a, a special guest in the building. Or should I say <laughs> guest? We have Tori Lane. And Little Tori. And, and Little Tori. Tori. We in there. Right. <laughs> little Tori doesn't look like you. That's not your son, is it? Nah, yeah. nah. Well, he kind of, you know what I'm saying? He was built in a time when I had to... Beard and shit, but I just cut my shit recently. So. Who, what does Little Tory rep represent? Well, he's the uh, he's the mascot for Love Me Now. Okay. So, yeah. Is Lo he a nice guy? Uh, yeah, would, Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Are you being nice to me? <laughs> I'm always nice. Well, then I'm a nice guy. Okay. Exactly. Love Me cool. Now sounds like you got your heart broke, man. Nah, nah, nah. Honestly, what 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 the what the album is actually derived off is actually kind of the opposite. It's like mm -hmm. something that's doesn't really have anything to really do with that at all, actually. What it is is uh, I had kind of like a near-death experience before. Um, the plane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I had that, like, the a plane, like, damn near fell out the sky pretty much. Yeah. And caught uh, caught back, like, 11,000 feet, like, probably, I think, 30 seconds before. Uh, we would have probably impacted the ground or whatever the case is. So it ended up being a situation where... Me going through that, I just kind of started thinking about certain things like, damn, like, if I was to go in that accident or whatever it was, like, would I, uh, would I have felt like I got everything done? Did I get to work with my peers? Did I get to be as much as an influence on my peers? Did, mm -hmm. I, give, did I give my fans everything that they wanted? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, was I here enough for my son? Did I, you know what I'm saying? Just a bunch of things that I was thinking about. And then I think it ended up being for me like, uh, you know, I want to do a, a project that's more of a collaborative project. And the reason why I called it Love Me Now is really Love Me Now with a question mark because it's like, this is more so for the fans. It's more so for the consumer. It's a lot of hit records. It's a lot of things that I feel like, you know, you're not going to skip over. And it also features like some of the hottest people, you know? So basically like Love Me Now because I could, if I die... Don't act like you love me when I'm dead, basically, type stuff. Or not, nah, just kind of just like, yo, love me now. Like, yeah. I did everything y'all wanted. Love me now. Like, because usually all my stuff, it don't ever really have, uh, you know, like it doesn't have features all the time yeah. and stuff like that. Like, I'm not really feature driven or stuff like that. I'm I'm just kind of a person who's usually the feature on the song or I'm, yeah. you know. Lil Tori, were you scared mm. when the plane was about to crash? Oh, I wasn't on the plane. I was lucky. No. That was before my time. <laughs> it, it, was before it, my was, time. it was before his time. Were you? How scared were you, Tori? Like, like, what were you thinking? What Did was, the oxygen, oxygen like, mask pop down and all, all right, that? So let me take you through this real quick because it's, it's, it's a long story. But I don't want it to be too long. We're in the sky. Um, I'm sleeping. I hear this beep and beep. It's just loud, loud as hell. I can't sleep past the beep. I wake up. I see the gas mask for all the yellow things. So then I'm, I'm like, yo going on still beeping then all of a sudden the pilot i had already had like a previous issue with the pilot so the pilot uh ended up being like i don't know he was just kind of weird to me and then I, i'm looking up from where i'm sitting and he got the uh his his mask on so i'm like yo they putting the masks on in the front so i'm like oh no nah, this this there's some whole other type shit going on over here like you feel me so i'm like i right, nah, forget it like i, I ain't even trying to be I'm like, so I sit back and I'm just like, I start praying and I start crouching down. They didn't make an announcement? That's what I'm saying. They didn't make no announcement. So, was it, this a private jet? Yeah, it was a private jet. Okay. I ain't going to expose him. I should have sued him, but whatever. I'm on the thing and all of a sudden, all this turbulence starts happening now. So then we start going like this. But every time it just keeps getting worse. I'm like, oh, like, yo, this, what, yo, what's going on? So all of a sudden, um, we start we start seeing like we we land in like a bunch of different turbulence and we land in like a storm a thunderstorm start seeing like lightning and all kind of crazy stuff and all kinds of other stuff so then i'm like yo what's what's going like everyone's screaming on the plane we feel like we about to die whatever case is now imagine we were 38,000 was it 39 39,000 feet and we fell down to uh to 13,000 feet and the time on the clock it was like as if you know, at five o'clock we went, uh, we started falling, and then at by five thirty-one, I mean, or by five oh one, we was at thirteen thousand feet. Ooh. So you got to understand how fast the plane was falling, and just the whole time, just thinking like, you know, I performed at Summer Jam that night and everything, but the whole time I'm just thinking like, damn, like, what if this would have been the last 
ride. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Praying like, and like thinking of things. Exactly. That like time. yeah, like, I'd have been like, damn, like you know what I'm saying? Am I gonna trend on social media? No, nah, I wasn't thinking that. I was more so thinking about like my son. Like, did you like try to type a message to him real fast? Nah, nah I was too scared. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm gonna shut a tear in there. I thought I was dead. You should have cried. What's wrong with that? I I, I was Who so was screaming. I was everybody, everybody. was screaming. Yeah, that's was, a life changing experience. Yeah, it was it was it was crazy. Like everybody was kind of on some, mm -hmm. you know, just like, I hope we get through this type stuff. Like you feel me? Did that so mess what? with you? Like as far as future planes, getting on planes now? Uh, for the first couple planes I got on after that, yeah. But like now, it is what it is. I'm what did you do when you landed? Um, we went to Summer Jam. We had to go straight to Summer Jam. I had, that's business must continue. Yeah, the business had to. Continue. And by the way, if you was to die, the world was gonna keep spinning too. That's the other crazy part. And that's part. the thing about it. Regardless, and that's and and that's why like if the world is gonna keep spinning after I die, regardless, because it is, I want to make sure that I have a a, a a print, at least with my peers and the people that I enjoy working with and the people who. You know, have an influence on my music as well. I mean, look at look how it is now when celebrities die. It's like people. It depends who you are. They mourn for a couple hours, and then could be a fist fight, and everybody switches tunes yeah, the very next day. You know, it, 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 when Mac Miller died, Mac Miller died on a Friday. Cardi and Nicki got into a fight that night. Everything just switched just that fast. It went from R.I.P. Nah, Mac you know, Miller to right. Cardi and Nicki. And, that, and, and that's crazy. And I'm sure that you know, the, if you know, you have an emotional attachment to certain people. You know, it doesn't go away in a right. couple hours. Um, and regardless if their fight was whatever everybody paid attention to at that time or whatever cases, it doesn't make um, his, his death uh, like less significant to what was going on, you know what I'm saying? It's 100%. Just a, it's just a matter of, that's just the way the internet is and the way the internet receives it. But like, if I die, I'm not, I don't even, I can't even care about how the internet receives it. Right, that's I'm not real dead. life. Like, yeah, it's a, that's, you know. Mm -hmm. You got a song on there called Why Don't You Love Me? That's a very insecure question. Yeah. Why don't you love me? I mean, I think everybody got some insecurities, though. Of course. You know? <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and be like, yo, I don't have no insecurities. Like, I be, you know. But when I when I wrote this song, the song is actually not even, like, really, it's not actually about a girl. The song is really just kind of like, uh, it's more so about, like, the fame aspect of it. Like, the game and how, how the, I look at the game like it's, like, a, like it's a girl. It's big. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's something that, to me, is, like, goes from nigga to nigga, but when you have it, you, it's like the it's like the girl who, even though she does some thotty shit, the world doesn't receive it like that. The world receives it like, yo, like, she's just golden. What is thotty shit it's, right now, anyway? Lil' Tori, what I'm is thotty saying, shit, like, Lil' Tori? Thotty shit? <laughs> hmm. You know, I haven't been enough around, I hadn't been around enough thoughts to know. Tori, what's <laughs> thotty shit? <laughs> um, um, <laughs> what are some, some honestly, great examples of thotty? What do you think thotty shit is? I don't know. I think honestly, some thotty shit is just like some shit you know you're not supposed to be doing. But at the end of the day, like you feel like you know, if I want to do it, I'm gonna do it. And if you have a right to do it in your mm -hmm. own right, if it makes sense in your mind, it's not morally correct to everybody. But if it's it's morally correct to that person, so you think you do thotty shit? Sometimes you know. <laughs> right. Sometimes you know what I'm saying. Thotty shit is subjective. Sometimes I do thotty shit. I believe. <laughs> you don't even have a dick, little thotty. I mean, that's little, what you little, don't know. What he has. That's what he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I never seen you with hair. Why are you growing hair? Man, I uh, had to fix my edges up a little bit first and foremost. You got a bald spot, bro. Get rid of that. Get, cut the shade, damn, bald. Why, why you got to? <laughs> damn, I can't. You, give me some time to grow out why here, don't you love I'm glad you got the hairline, though. You know I didn't know you had the, I, thought, I, I thought your hairline was non-existent, so it's good to know you got one of those. <laughs> but get the baldy. What's up, man? Why are nah, you trying nah. to make him like you? Because yeah, like he, he just wants. You know what I realized? Yo, 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 yo. Let me say, let me say, let me say one thing, okay? And I realized this, all right? For the, all the bald niggas out there, dog, like, <laughs> I was a good role model for the time I was here, my niggas, and I and I wore it strong, my nigga. But I'm out, my nigga. No, like just let me no. time out, nope. dog. Out. Time out, time out, time out. <laughs> nope. However you find your way to the river is how you find your way to the river, my <laughs> nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just cause I found my Word. way to the river, you ain't find your way to the river yet. Even if you if you go into the river or not. <laughs> but I found my way to the now, dog. Just let me get my water and be me, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like real, talk, <laughs> real talk, my See, dude. I think the right? you, you got the Yeah, no, no, no. What I did was I, I, I had to get it, like, on my side, on the edges. I, my hair was never that fucked up. I just, once did, my edges started going oh, crazy. Shit, Tori. I swear to God. Your hairline was trash look, like look, mine. Look at my old shit. Okay. My, my everything in here was straight. Just my my sides and my edges was getting crazy, my nigga. It was getting ridiculous. So Is I was like, yo, I gotta fix Tiger this shit. To? Nah. And Safari? 
No. <laughs> I don't know who Safari went to, to be honest with you. How much you older than you? My shit was like 30, 30,000, some shit like that. Damn. Yeah, nigga, it costs money, my nigga, if you want to be right. <laughs> you know, or, 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 right niggas end up going, or niggas end up going to shit like Bosley and then they go fuck your head up because they not like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm with what about this part, though? Show my me, shit, my shit go? good. I'm my shit gonna grow. Nick, I'm, come here, get I'm, the I'm camera, good. Nick. Nick. Hey, yo, <laughs> Nick, you come over here. Beat your ass, my nigga. Nick, go over there and I'll beat your ass, my nigga. Some real shit about to try to play me in this motherfucker. Try to play me in this motherfucker, man. You gonna know, you get Nick fucked up over here. I'm about to beat Nick ass. Hey, Lil Tori. No yeah. more cameraman for Breakfast Club and shit. Like, shit would've been crazy. Yeah, yeah. The cameraman would've been all fucked up. Show would've been fucked up. The camera would've been Lil on the Tori ground filming the wall. Happen. You would have heard all kind of noises in the back. You try to get Nick fucked up. No, Tory, man. pass Yo. Big Tory your hat, man. What's that? Yo. <laughs> what that big? Shit. Big Tory, I'm going to go take a smoke break. I can't handle these motherfuckers. Go ahead, all man. Right. Do your thing. Do your thing. Charlamagne got his head thing. off for a reason. You got damn right. I don't got you no know. haircut. Tory no, way braver than me. But you know what I always say? You know what I, you know what I will say, though? Like, I've always had, like, a bald spot here. Like, always. Even mm-hmm. since, like, the say it days for some reason. But... I got my shit straight. I'm about to be good. Watch. I'm gonna come here when I'm wavy. You and when I'm and when I'm super wavy, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna just I'm gonna come in with a brush. The whole interview, I'm not even gonna talk. I'm just gonna <laughs> brush my shit. I'm just gonna be brushing my Listen, shit looking crazy. You bullshitting. I might give you a headline too. I've been thinking about it. I ain't no, gonna don't lie do that. To you you can't because you make fun of too many people. So I'm not making fun of you. I'm not. I'm not. You can't. I, I, like can't I, I put it. it in verses. Like mm-hmm. it's a it's a notorious line I have. I said every, everything is off top. Word to my ball spot. That's a real line. Like that word, was word. an actual like fl- funk flex line. Like that. you know what I'm saying? How That's what it? I'm saying. Like I, I was rocking with the ball niggas proudly, dog. I was with y'all niggas, and I, and I don't like the way that you hate it because I'm back where I need to be. Well, you have a good shape head. You know what I'm saying? Your uh-huh. head is like not a funny shape, so you can nah, be thank bald. You. I appreciate it. Nah, you know, I, I, for me personally, I'm one of those dudes where it's like, whatever I do, I jump into it, like all the way. <laughs> We've seen your stage. I swear. We've seen your stage shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down to everything I do. Yeah. So for me, like, I'm the type of person when my shit start going crazy, I'm like, yo, I gotta cut this all off. And like, if I'm gonna cut this all off, I gotta be the best nigga that cut this off. Like, you know what I'm saying? I gotta be like the most presentable but it's just still me type shit and I still then I just cut it off and I just rocked it how I rocked it like you feel me like that's all it was how's your relationship with Travis Scott now uh, we don't really we don't really talk we don't really talk too much but when we uh when we, the last time we spoke it was just on a on a level of like I right, you know I don't know exactly on whose side of where how the video got serviced but the video was old mm-hmm. so we it was it was more so just like yo how, why is this out now opposed to yo my nigga when I catch you you know what I'm saying yeah. it's just the people who didn't know about it after they fact they you know they probably heard about it for the first time and was like yo what the fuck this is this new thing but it wasn't or, you know what do you think this new album is gonna prove for Tory Lanez man um, I feel like Tory I feel like everybody always says Tory's dope but then it's like that's it Tory's dope um I mean me personally, that's I'm fine with that. Like right. my thing is just like at the end of the day, I've I've always been an artist, at least from what I see, like I've seen many niggas have this like moment where they're hot and then like they fall and then like they like I've seen many cats like in the time that I've been around, I've seen many cats come and fall. Mm-hmm. And as they fall, I've continued to build. Mm. And like the thing about it is is like a lot of dudes don't realize yo, you can come in the game. And you can come to the top, and you could be at the top just when you first come in. But if you don't build a foundation for yourself, when when it's time and your off season time is, and you're not on the radio and it's not your cycle, you're gonna fall down because there's nothing up here. There's nothing to hold you up. Me, I've I've done a great job of setting a foundation for me. If I if I'm off season, if I don't drop a single on the radio, if I don't go on a promo tour or whatever the case is, like my shows still sell out. My everything still sells. My records still get plaques. My everything still goes for me. Well you so are my consistently thing is, putting out music though at the same time. And uh, but the thing about it is it's like you said you said you said Consi- I am you are consistent. consistently putting out music. Well the thing about it is it's like how many artists do we know just in this day and age, you know, besides like who we know can do it. But how many artists do we know that can consistently still be putting out music, 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 this consistent as I am, and if for, for it to still be rocking and niggas not to get bored at this point? Drake, because I don't understand how he does it. I've been ex- saying that. Ex- I'm like, that nigga's that's like why, Tom That's Brady why I said before I said I said, without the, with the exception of who we know does it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's doing, who does it? 
who can consistently keep putting out project, 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 and get in the same response like, yo, this nigga outdid it this time. Oh, this nigga did it this time. Oh, this, I ain't gonna lie, this nigga did it. And like, that's why I'm cool with like, right now in the situation, well, not literally right now, because I think, you know, the, the this project kind of opened up a lot of people's eyes because musically, I feel like, and sonically, it just sounds barely, really good. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I think what's different about everything that I got going on right now is, People could be like, yo, he's the underrated artist, but no matter what they say, I'm still building. Right. And I'm, as long as I'm not going backwards and I'm building up, like, yo, I'm going to get to the top. And when I do get to the top, there's not going to be a knocking me off because I already built that. And your peers respect you, too. Yeah. Because it doesn't seem like when people when you ask for a feature, people are saying no. Yeah, no, nah, it's never been like that. A lot of the times, it's really just people like, yo, whenever we get a chance to lock in, let's lock in. Like, nobody ever really came from me talent wise maybe somebody had a, a misconception about me or mm -hmm. thought like yo this nigga i don't like his attitude or i just don't like something about him or something like that but it was never it was never one of those is music so, enough nowadays though like enough for 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 you to like really be a, a star star i think the music is one thing but i think also it's about the package it's about like um, when I first got signed, they used to tell me something that I, I for some reason, it just never, even as cliche as stupid as it is, it never, it never left me. Like they said, the real superstars, whether if you're if you're a boy, uh, you know, the girls gotta want to fuck you, and and the guys gotta want to be you, and vice versa. Yeah, they always used to say that. And and that always stuck with me. Like and so like I've always been on a place where it's like, I sing, I cater to women, I rap, I cater to niggas. Sometimes vice versa caters to vice versa, but at the same time, people like me because in all and every single aspect, I'm a bring it. I don't, and I'm a one man army. Like that's what that's what people gotta understand about me. I am a one man army. Like I I, I didn't come in the game with some crazy cosign and some some other rap nigga to to go yo. This is my dog, and we came up together off of each other's clout. I didn't do that. I came up by myself. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like I came up doing this by myself. So it's like I never needed those those things to make me uh, solidified. I yeah. never felt like I needed those things to make me solidified. So I don't know. I look at I, I look at it a little differently from from the way that people view it. You know. You have a very large entourage as well. Like you came in here real <laughs> nah, rapper like. Nah, nah, nah. Here. Let me explain. You got goons. You got nah, little Tory. You got. Nah, that's my. Those are my security. You got a harem of ladies. <laughs> Nah, nah. Who are all those young women with you? Nah, it was, uh, we were all coming from something else. Nobody really got to go to sleep yet. So we was oh. all coming from somewhere else. And we was like, yo, we got to make it. So we just came to just handle. Usually I'm very light. I don't really travel this heavy. Y'all know how I travel. I don't really. I don't know how you, I don't, I don't know know you travel. Late. I've been here three damn times. Like, y'all no, don't, I mean, know, well, I don't be having. A, around, yeah, but I mean, like, you know, when we do press, like, I don't really ever be having uh, a lot of people with me. It's just. So the women, those women, women you bought from the club or something? No, nah, no, nah, one of those was my homegirl. She came with a friend. Oh, got you, got you, got you. They're enjoying themselves. Right? They just was, they was with us. We, now you, you look also mad guilty supposed... when you said that, by the way. You look I like mean, you. Listen. Oh, no, no, it's just my Yo. homegirl. She came with a friend. I'm not even talking <laughs> to Charlamagne. He already owed me 36 seconds for that dumb shit he tried to pull with Nick He's earlier. Really trying to blow you Word. And, and you too, Nick, for coming in. Right. You, you owe me 11 seconds in, in, in the bathroom. Pause. We don't want to hear no messages from the Puerto Rican princess Jocelyn complaining. Nah, we ain't worried about none of those. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> you said you're not worried about none of those? No, nah, I'm never worried about none of those. That ain't got nothing to do with my life. Mm. What's going on, though? Oh, Joss, yeah, yeah, that's what they said. Same day, she is, yo, she's like, come on, Charlamagne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I had to like, think about on, it for a second. Pick me up, Charlamagne. I need you to say something real fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, you know what? I actually like Jocelyn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like Jocelyn, too. I think mm -hmm. she's a cool person. Um, but, like, you know, like I expressed uh, on, a, on a previous interview, like, mm -hmm. it, it just came to a point of, like, the, there's a truth and there's a lie. You know what I'm saying? The truth is, I'm single. The truth is, you know, we never had one of those type type of things to even have made it one of those type of things. The truth is, go to the go to the last interview. I said it, read it, like hear it, and just you know right. really really digest it. It's not that I ever said anything bad about her, whatever the case is. It's just you know. But what, you know a picture like that, how people. Yeah, but my nigga, it. but 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 how much shit have y'all seen? Like, let's look at Tori for a second. How much <laughs> wild shit have you seen me do online? Like. 
Like, you've seen me do a lot of wild shit. You've seen multiple titties and ass in my hand. Like, let's be, let's be honest yeah, yeah, yeah. about this. Like, you feel me? I went over there to swim. I swear on everything. I went over there to swim. And as we was chilling, drinking, having a good conversation, she's a good person. I'm not gonna, that's why I said I'm not gonna say I'm bashing. We was having a conversation, whatever. She started taking pictures. She said, you want to take a picture? I said, yeah, I'm chilling. You I'm swimming. I don't give a fuck. Had the blunt in my mouth. I'm smoking, chilling. The world going to take it for what the world take it as. But it's like at the end of the day, like that was that day I took the picture was the first day I met her. Oh, okay. Didn't even know her. Did you <laughs> fuck? Nah. Like, and even if I did fuck, I wouldn't even. I'm not a, a tell fucking off. tell off right. to the whole world and broadcast it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was, it's not one of those situations. And you know we wouldn't be mad if Tory Lane settled down, even though we know you as the single yeah, guy, but, but, curving your ex and all of that. We wouldn't. Nah, be mad nah, if nah. He but you down. know, no, no disrespect to Jocelyn. I think that you know she, somebody is is in this world for her specifically, but it's not gonna be Tory. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got a plan for you, Jocelyn, but how, I'm not involved. In how, do you, how do you treat your exes? I mean, I got a good, I got, I got like a good rapport with my exes. I don't really talk to them as much, but when we talk, it's like, yo, what up? How you been? It's, it's real cordial. Like I don't, I, I never really had those kind of relationships or like those kind of breakups where it was like, yo, on some real shit to the end of time, yo, <laughs> fuck you. Like I only had those with girls who weren't in real relationships. I only have those with girls who I had like little tiny things with. Situationships. Like, yeah, little tiny, yeah, like situationships. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. Little situationships with like that's the only time I've had like yo, yo fuck you like when I <laughs> yo when I get on like yo fuck you like you know. Now how do you feel about taking pictures with people? We had a whole discussion up here about it the other day <laughs> about whether you as a celebrity if someone wants to take a picture. regular pictures. Yeah, like Just come people? up to you a fan like. You oh no 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 no! The thing about it is is like yo every picture gotta get taken. Mm -hmm. Every picture gotta get taken. I don't care if I'm mad. I don't care if I'm crying. I might not be the time, but yo, I gotta take this picture. I get paid to take a, like, I'm getting paid for this. Like, you mean to tell me this niggas out there going to the factory six o'clock in the morning, niggas is putting their Tims on it, grabbing the baby mamas in the room, son crying to make six dollars an hour in their hard labor, whatever they're doing. And all I gotta do is literally just be me and take pictures with niggas. Why would I not like? Well, I get paid to do that. That's what I signed up for. Is to take pictures. I want to get my face seen, right? And plus, every <clears> single picture I take, that's an album sale. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, that person will always remember that. Like I took a picture. The first celebrity I ever took a picture with was Pitbull. He doesn't even know, and I never forget that shit. Nigga was at a turkey drive in Miami. And I don't know why I was there to this day. I don't even know what my mom had brought me over there for. But I seen Pitbull. He was wearing a cowboy hat. He had the white outfit on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, was it a no? Nah, no, nah, it was the cowboy boots. He had the you know the, the little boots like <laughs> they look like cowboy boots. What he was wearing? He was wearing something. <laughs> and I remember taking a picture with him. And like that was the first time. You know what I'm saying? And like stuff like that for me, I'll never forget that. You know what I'm saying? Like I never actually bought an album, but if I was old enough at the time to like be somebody who was buying albums, I would have bought a Pitbull album if I seen it in stores because of what he did. To this day, you still like Pitbull because of that. You're like, exactly. I like, yo, I'll him never like, Pitbull. like, I'll never forget that he took a picture with me. And even maybe he might watch this interview and be like, you know what I'm saying? I took a picture with this nigga. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But I'll never forget that. As big as I am, and you don't know who somebody could be. That's right. real. Because right now, this could have been a moment where Pitbull didn't take a picture. I could have fucked Pitbull, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but it's not that. Do it's you remember Pitbull. people who said that? You know what I'm saying? Them? I, I don't I don't I don't really have too many moments where I've like yeah. been like yo can I get a picture but that was one and you know I got a picture like I remember one time um I think it was I think it was Bo Outlaw this is crazy yeah. Bo I Outlaw that. this is crazy <laughs> Bo Outlaw I think he played for the um the Magic the Magic is long time yeah, 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 yeah. in the nineties or some shit I was like I don't know what team he played for but he was out in Orlando like a like a like a uh, Orlando Magic's game or some shit like that or something. And I remember, or like a WNBA game, that's what it was. And I remember my, my aunt took me over there. We saw him in the stands and I asked him for a picture and he was like, nah. But he signed something, but he signed something for me. But I never will forget his name, Bo Outlaw. I remember Bo like, Outlaw too. I, but I remember that nigga, I used to like that name. Because back in the day, that was a dope jersey to have to yeah, say Outlaw, Outlaw on the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah nah, for sure. I mean, 
but it is what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? You just never know what platform somebody's gonna be able to speak on or mm -hmm. somebody's gonna be on where they could be like, yo, my nigga, like I was I was a fucked up guy that could be, you know. Did did uh did Nikki ever get mad at you for letting everybody know that you took she she wanted off of shooters? Nah, I mean, I mean it wasn't a get mad at me situation. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it wasn't a I never put the song out. I never dis like I said, never disrespected right. yeah, it. Yeah, I thought it, it was she mad that she was telling the story of what I'm saying. What you mean? Oh yeah. no, nah, I mean at the end of the day I don't talk to Nikki. I was just yeah. explaining what happened. Like she was originally supposed to be on the song and whatever happened. That's all it was. It wasn't a it's not really a get mad situation. It just that's what actually happened. Mm -hmm. Are you re uh, doing this collaborative project with Chris Brown? Still? Yeah, man. Me, me, and uh, I bet you know it's crazy because I've been doing a lot of work with a lot of different people, just because like I love to get in the studio. So right now, like even with uh with with Meek, like me and Meek got a whole project going on too, and we've been working on it. Me and Chris got one, and I've been working on a bunch of stuff with A Boogie, and I'm just kind of just expanding my sound to a lot of other places too, and kind of like doing these little joint things because I, I like to see what comes out of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think um, with me, it's easy to work with people who are on it and who are like back to back, back to back with it. And like those people that I just mentioned, like usually when we get in the studio, it's usually like a back to back factor. So um, yeah, like I, I'm working on that, but but honestly, the most important things are, are for me is clearly the Spanish project and um, also, you know, I got the Chicks Tape 5 about to come back out because I feel like I, I done let, a, like, I done left a lot of my R&B fans, <laughs> like, in this group waiting for, like, this sound to come back. And it's like, I just been, like, leaving them there. And, like, now it's, it's time for me to really come back and, like, do what I'm supposed to do. Because so niggas, be, niggas be forgetting, like, that I could go back into the Say It <laughs> bag and the Love bag like this. Like, don't forget, these are just bags. Go in these bags every day if I want. Got records that sound. I got records that sound just like Say It. I got records that sound like records that we haven't even heard yet. I'm talking about like I'm an innovative person, but all the music that I make doesn't always come out at every single second that I make it. So it's so much stuff that I have in store that I'm like, yo, like when y'all hear this, it's gonna be crazy. Like you feel me? Like so, it's different. It's different uh, multitudes of work that I do, but I'm always working no matter what's going on. So you and me got a whole album. Well, it's not done, but yeah. 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 Does it so, matter to you where you record? Like if you're in Toronto, if you're recording in Miami, do, do those things change your mood and like the type of music you want to do? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Toronto makes me want to make like real like in my feelings music. Like not necessarily in my feelings, but like it makes me want to make like like dark kind of music. Like music that's really for emotion or really for feeling however you feel because like sometimes the thing about Toronto is I like to write in the winter time in Toronto when it gets dark at four o'clock every day and it gets real depressing and like gray outside <laughs> because like there's a certain feeling in the air that you that I feel like I can only get with the landscape of Toronto and mm -hmm. going through the, the gardener to the city and it's certain things that that evokes out of me uh, for me like with Miami now I know Miami intrinsically so it's like I love Miami like, you know what I'm saying? And when I make records in Miami, they always feel good. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're always those kind of records. This whole project that I did was Miami inspired. Okay, because that it was makes all, sense. All this, all this stuff is like, you know, I got my, my uh, penthouse in Miami, and from where I look, I see the whole city. So every day, like, when it's evening time, I go in there and record, and the city's like just this pinkish orange, and it's like, the way it shines in like the window, and like, the, I don't know, when I'm recording, I look, I look directly out there, because I record myself. I don't just go to the studio all the time. I just record myself in the room. And I look out the window and I'm just recording. It just makes me feel good. And that's what this, the music on Love Me Now was inspired by. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that and, of course, the accident. I saw you on uh, Van Lathan's Red Pill and you was talking about uh, the N-word and and how you feel a little bit uncomfortable when white people sing it at your shows. No, I never said that. But well, not uncomfortable, but you... That wasn't me. That wasn't you on He it? was saying that Kendrick brought somebody up at his yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess he was saying, like, I don't I even know the incident, but something about along the lines, I guess the girl had he to go if he over was a certain her rap part. His lyrics. Yeah. yeah, she was, he was letting her rap his lyrics or something, and the girl had to go over a part that said nigga or something like that. Yeah. 
and I I don't know what you know what actually happened. Yeah, whatever. that's what happened. She was she, she was it. rapping and she just said the n word. That's all. And, and went, so is it okay it for white viral. people to use it? I just it I, I, and music? like I said I said <laughs> in, in that situation I just kind of feel like I mean you gave it a mic you knew you had the, like you can't expect her to be so in sick with her mind that nigga she knows when to bleep and she's not a radio station yeah. like you know what I'm saying like I just kind of feel like you know um. I feel like there is a difference between, you know, when someone says, you know, with, with the ER and the, or the A, you know, I do feel like there's a difference between nigger and nigga. And I feel like, you know, when people say it in a derogatory term, you know, when someone's saying like, yo, you like they're, they're, they're kind of pointing it at you. I think that the term niggas has become, you know, a uh, 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 term of endearment. I don't know about all that, but I'm just saying it's a term of nigga. It just, it it just it really. yeah, and Damon is like, yo, you know, like I appreciate you. Yeah, so like my nigga, that's yeah, a term of but not necessarily because I could be like, yo, that nigga's a fuck nigga, dog. And, you know what You're I'm saying? Right but context. what I mean, no, what niggas kind of technically at this point of time is starting to mean to a, a general audience of people is guys, like, like one, two, three, four, five, six. If Shorty calls me on the phone right now and says, yo, how many niggas is in that room? That was about six niggas in here. He's not black. He's not black, and he's not black. And Nick White is definitely not black. You feel me? <laughs> Why are you picking on Nick? Nick didn't nah, do nothing to him, Tori. <laughs> Nick was doing his job because I told him to. Nick, my That's man, I, I got to get him now. You Nick know what I'm saying? Trying to come for you, me. Man. I got to come for him now. <laughs> nah, but like, he, like, not everybody in here is black. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if some, if a, if a black girl call a black guy in and say, yo, who's in there? Yo, it's about three girls, or it's about four girls and like six niggas in there. Well, you call me my... And, and in the in the beginning of this interview. Well, when I say it, I don't necessarily. I'm not necessarily <laughs> pointing it at you. That's no, what I'm saying. I'm necessarily just saying it out. Like when I say my nigga, it's kind of like bro. You know, it's it, that's when I say yeah, yeah, yeah. determine endearment into whatever I'm talking about. Yeah. But that's that's kind of like you know goes into whatever the topic you're talking about. Do you now. care if white people use it in the songs? I mean, if if it. It's it's a weird thing to me. Like I'm not gonna say and be like, yo, that's okay. Like you know, what I'm saying like if. It's it's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, like, like you kind of giving them a license to do it. I just kind of feel like us as black rappers, it's like we've made it such a thing. Oh my fault. I'm sorry. I just feel like us as black rappers, like we made it such a thing to like use it in everything that it kind of makes them feel like, yo, when I if I'm a, if I'm gonna be like these guys, at the end of the day, like it shouldn't matter if I say it too. Some people feel still on the fence about it, and then some people don't feel on the fence about it. You know, I just kind of feel like for me, the term is the term is the term. Like some people's going to use it and some people is not. And sometimes some people's going to use it that you're going to be like, yo, what the fuck? Da, 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 da. But at the end of the day, it's like, how serious are we really taking this? Like if, if fucking if we go on, if we go, if I'm here and I'm like, yo, nigga, this nigga, that. And it's OK for me to say it, but it's also OK for six nine to say Niggas MV, uh, it's okay. It doesn't matter because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he, what he's Spanish, so he's still a minority. So then it kind of makes it okay now for somebody who's not actually black descent to say nigga. So it's like, how serious do we really take this term? You know what I'm saying? It's just when you see the white boy with the blue eyes say nigga, then it's like, yo, my nigga, you ain't, yo, my nigga, <laughs> you ain't even. And then another thing is this too, I'm not even gonna front. Like, yo, it's some white kids that grew up around us that. They say nigga because yo, their environment was our environment. So it's like we, we there's some white boys on the block that's like, yo, my nigga, you're like, yo, my nigga, what are you saying, nigga? They're like, yo, so what's up? My nigga was popping. And and that's it. Because they done they done been locking for that their whole life. Well, because they better they, not say that in the wrong space. But it's niggas who don't, don't it's, know you. And like I say, I'm not saying it's black people. I'm saying it's niggas, period, who don't care. Mm -hmm. It's 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 and white it's white people. Do, so. It's white, it's white, it's some white kids that grow up in, in certain environments that just don't they the same way I don't give a fuck they don't give a but fuck but then if they leave that environment and they go somewhere where people don't know them and they say it that and, might be taken a and, whole different way and but way. the thing is it's like when you grow around niggas like us it can get taken a whole different way they're ready to fight for theirs mm -hmm. because they grew up like us right. so it's like how serious can we really take this word does Canada understand the not niggers niggas mm -hmm. though like the, the slang of it yeah. you know what I'm saying like how serious can we really take the word I just does try Can not to use it does Canada understand the historical context of the word? Or is it just looked upon as a slang word? Well, I mean, for me to be like this Canada as a whole, anything, I can't speak for I feel you. Not, <laughs> you try to get me in one of those 
No, no, no. That's no. one of those ones, like, yo, where the whole Canada would have been like, yo, Tori, that fucked up, dog. Like, like no, I can't I speak on the whole about, Canada. I was thinking about the Drake uh, picture with the blackface on it. And I was like, I wonder if Drake even understood the historical context of blackface or why that would be offensive to some people in America. I think um, for what he said, the definition of for whatever reason was that he was actually doing it, if if that is true, I think that whatever he was, his cause was, was uh, I don't think he came and painted his face black to be like, yo, my nigga, ha, 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 ha nah, my nigga. I, I just, I don't personally believe that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just don't see him doing that. And that's not even because it's a, I'd have told y'all that four interviews ago. Like, right. I just don't see him doing that. Now that y'all are cool, but. Yeah, like, I'm not going to. said it even if y'all wasn't cool. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I just, like, nigga, we, like, we're from Toronto at the end of the day, like we still see the same things everybody else sees. Like, and I think that sometimes like the whole concept of, or the whole concept of Canada is like, nah, it's not, y'all don't have to deal with the same issues, but it's like, yeah, we still do deal with a lot of the same things. So at the end of the day, like we still see how y'all see it. We're not gonna go, especially growing up around all the people we grow up and then go in a, in a place, paint my face black just so I could shit on the people that I grew up around. Like, Niggas not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. True. You should get Pitbull on the Spanish album. You should. Word, yo, and I that should tell him. I should tell him. I should tell him that I took it. That he's the first celebrity that took my. I should tell him. You gonna hook it up? He gonna see this. We gonna make it happen. I'm you gonna hook it up? Yeah. Let's I heard you got some that. connection with these Spanish niggas out here. Yeah, yeah. I got what? You. <laughs> Word, she, got, she got the connection. <laughs> That's with what Spanish niggas be saying in the streets. What niggas be saying Until in the streets? Got the Angelis, with the Spanish. He's connected. Right. Damn. All right, with Tory Lanez, love me now. Love Me Now, man. The hottest album in the world. He's waiting for your co sign Charlamagne. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be mean, looking like at that Charlamagne <laughs> face sometimes when he just be like, a dope album. Listen, I'm, I don't like that shit. <laughs> I'll be totally honest with you, Tori. I've never been disappointed with a Tory Lanez project. I, T, A. I mean, I, I've never been disappointed. Hey, to with all y'all artists that like actually do make him disappointed, I want y'all to know like that's a little <laughs> seal that I just got right there. You know? <laughs> I mean, like, this nigga be disappointed in a lot of shit, bro. But nah, I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, you you're very really consistent. You got a sound that. People will fuck with. I wait till this. Ch wait till the chicks tape five come out, and then I want everybody to holler. Yeah, I'm excited that. for that. Cause I promise, like that's when I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring like real that real R and B, young nigga. You know, sound back. That's you know? for us. All right. Yeah. Well, it's Tory Lanez. It's the Breakfast Club.